I do want to say suffering has become too narrow. And I'm talking about this because getting, I'm talking about suffering because we need to talk about the why behind the lie, what starts to drive some of our inner stuff. We all have real pain, and if we start to let ourselves be exposed, we're going to find that probably 80% of us are grieving. We're frustrated. We're struggling with injustice. We're struggling with um, worry or anxiety or depression. And we let people into that. Suffering is not just this tidy little topic. Suffering is an enormous idea. And a lot of people struggle with suffering because we don't define it correctly. It's multifaceted. In Scripture, we have all kinds of different ones. We have spiritual suffering. Paul talks about this with the thorn in the flesh. Um, satanic attack, Paul actually pl- labeled it a grace of God that God allowed this suffering to stay in Paul's life. Paul wasn't seeking for that suffering to go away. He was actually embracing it as a way to keep him humble. humble. There's mental suffering, you know, the demoniac and being tortured in the mental capacities. There's people through um, lots of hidden sin or lots of sexual sin. They start to take on mental incapacities because of always hiding, always telling lies, always hiding, always putting up another persona. And then out of that sometimes comes multiple personalities and schizophrenia. And and I'm not saying it's always that simple. Sometimes it's a chemical thing, but we have mental suffering. We have stuff like stress, okay? We have emotional suffering that comes in like anguish and grieving and Things that cause that all the time. It's anytime something dies, the death of a dream, the death of a child, the death of a loved one, the death of an expectation. All those things cause suffering. And if I'm being honest, I'll say that I I experience those emotional sufferings, those mental sufferings daily. Stress and anguish. And I I I ask myself, well, I look at Jesus and he he was bearing so much mental and emotional suffering, stress and anguish. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he said, God, please take this cup from me. But God didn't take the cup from him. And Peter didn't want to walk with Jesus in that suffering. Peter wanted to come in, cut off the servant, cut off the ear, and say, you know what? We don't want any of this. We want to save Jesus from these guards. We want to save him from the cross. When Jesus was like, no, you don't know what you'd be saving me from. You'd be basically sealing your own fate if you didn't let me go and die for you and pay for your sins. On that note, we have total suffering, the crucifixion. Uh, We come, we have the word excruciating that literally comes from that uh, moment of Jesus' life because we need a word for pain to describe something of that um, severity. We have financial suffering. Some people suffer with poverty. I would say that rich people suffer at the hands of finance. I have a friend, he, um, he flies for very... Uh, famous people and flew to an island and um, taking a guy to an island and this guy would fly to meetings and he would check out the um, fishing reports on his private island to and from meetings and if if he liked to meet if he liked the fishing report on his island he'd have them fly his jet down go fishing for a couple hours in his private island and then fly to his next meeting this is the kind of life that this person lived and and he came in one morning this person was just all out drunk and he said are you okay he said no he's like I I spend all, he said, I'm not okay. He said, I spend all my time worrying about how to keep what I have and how to get more of what I want. And I think that that summary is so profound. The suffering, that that financial burden, it became a bondage to him. He was always trying to preserve the world he'd created and always trying to get more. You know, like Rockefeller, how much is too much money? He's like, I just need one more penny. It's always just getting something more. Because we think that that might change the thing inside of us that's saying we're not complete yet, but yet we don't ever find it because Jesus is the only thing that fills that void. We might go through relational suffering, feeling abandoned or alone. Jesus' disciples felt this when he left. He said, don't worry, I won't leave you as orphans. He knew that they were feeling like they were being orphaned when Jesus said he was going to go away. But he said, don't worry, I'm going to send you the... He was speaking of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send somebody to you. You're not going to be orphaned. You're not going to be alone. But that feeling of abandonment, that feeling of left alone, we feel that. We all feel that, that feeling of isolation. There might be public suffering, being slandered, being ridiculed. You know, David had, King David had plenty of this. Jesus had plenty of this. Paul had plenty of this. You might go through physical sufferings like Paul did, beatings and abuse and and torment. Or personal suffering, like shame, things you beat yourself up about, about your past. 
So suffering is not just this tidy little topic. It's not slender. It's got robust. And we can say in a lot of that, there was different flavors of different kind of suffering that people were going through. Some, you might say, were, were beautiful in their, in their intent of God creating his character in them, like Paul in the thorn in the flesh. Some of them, you might say, were satanically inspired and that they were designed only to bring, draw them down and to bring them away from the life of God. Some of you, some of them might have been volitional. It might have been because they were choosing something and that, that will, willful disobedience was causing that suffering. We can't just blame suffering on one thing or the other. 